Uh, no, I know I haven't. This is the first time. I'm um, pretty tired. <laughs> I left everything out there this weekend. Happy? Of course. I'm very happy. No, this is uh, definitely the, the best moment in my career. So I uh, have to enjoy this right now. And uh, I mean, to do it with a team like this, we've been working for this for years now. And uh, it's a really special moment. So we'll have to, we have to enjoy this now and then get ready for all through. Yourself uh, today? Is it the regular serve here? Uh, the amount of cases? Is usual? Uh, no, I mean, I I can I, I can serve like this. I've served like this before, but my serve is a bit inconsistent. Sometimes I, I can serve uh, tournaments at a time where I serve like this, and then I can go and not serve very well for a few tournaments. But but I mean, I'm, I'm used to serving like this on like once in a while, like on a regular basis, not all the time, but. Like I said, I can improve my serve, and uh, I think today, uh, today that serve was huge for me. It really uh, helped me, help me uh, get some free points and uh, save my energy to, to break. Patrick, you looked a little tired in that third set. So much so you were sitting down in the line judge's chair at one point and leaning over the railing. Uh, it made people wonder who would have won a fourth set if you had gone to it. What do you think? I think I would have won the fourth set. <laughs> Uh, I was ready to go five if I if it had to. I, I would have. Uh, I'm a fighter. I, even if I had lost that set, I wouldn't have. Uh, it wouldn't have changed anything. I would have been playing the same. Uh, and obviously, if I start getting a little bit more tired, I just change my game and, and maybe I start attacking a bit more or, or do something different. But but by no means would it uh, would it mean I would lose a match if I lost that third set. More questions? Yeah, the crowd. How do you feel about having such a crowd? Uh, no, it's, it was uh, it was a lot of fun to be honest. Like it, it, it's fun, it's fun to be on the court. And it's fun to, to battle with your opponent and the crowd at the same time, and and uh, it gives you an opportunity to step up. And and, and I like that. I like that kind of stage. Um, I think they were very loud, but but very respectful at the same time. So it wasn't. Uh, I thought it was a very a pretty. I mean. Fair crowd, but it's respectful. Yeah. They booed you when you well, went for a bathroom break and when you came back. <laughs> Well, no. I mean, uh, no. I, I don't think. Uh, I mean, they obviously want their team to win. You know, they're not. They're not here to to, to just watch tennis. They want. They obviously, they're here to watch tennis, but they want their team to win at the same time. So if I go and take 15 minute bathroom break, well, I'd be upset if I was one of them. You know, but I just have to take a little bit more time because I have a lot of clothes to change, ankle braces. It takes a long time to, to do everything. Obviously, I can understand why they're upset. If I was in their situation, I'd be I'd be upset too. Martin. How you feel to bring Canada to the World Cup since you know, six, seven years? Yeah, <clears throat> seven years, uh, 2004, the last time. It feels great because uh, you know this year was uh, particularly very difficult because we didn't play at home once. We played three times away uh, in difficult conditions, in, in altitude play, in sea level play, now you know, in, in front of a tough team and tough crowd. <clears throat> and uh, the last tie, we were down 2-0. And this one comes down to the last match, last round qualifying, the last fifth, uh, fifth match. So we had plenty of drama, but in the end, uh, it feels great because I really feel that uh, everybody contributed throughout the whole year. Milos uh, got us some wins in Mexico, and you know, Vashek and, and Philip Bester came big in, in uh, in Guayaquil, and you know, Vashak here played some great tennis, and Daniel Nestor didn't play the first one, but uh, got us a big doubles win in the last two. So, like, you know, when you look at everybody, uh, everybody really committed to this. This was a, a big commitment from the beginning of the year when the draw came out, and Davis Cup was a priority, and we wanted to make World Group this year. We had a great opportunity, and some young guys playing good and coming up. So. Um, so it, it feels great to have accomplished uh, our mission. Good. Martin, this, uh, after the fourth match, how did you feel about Vashik condition? I mean, physically and mentally, you felt, you believe he can do it? Yes. No, after definitely. all these games? Listen, no, 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 listen, before this tie, I told all the staff that this would be Vashik's big, big weekend. That uh, he can win all three matches, it would be tough, but... Um, he played a lot of tennis this summer, and it is very hot, you know, in America in, in the summer. And, and Bashek prepared for this uh, 
not only by winning and getting a lot of confidence, but also with his with his coach Fred Niemeyer, working before matches, after matches, uh, doing uh, doing so many things to be fit physically and to be able to be ready to sustain good tennis for for many many for a lot of time, you know. And that's what gets uh, good consistency from good players that. Uh, the body doesn't break down when they are playing well. And Vashnik uh, has been doing this since July, since Guay Akil played and trained very hard. So it's not often that uh, you see a 20-year-old guy um, win three matches like this under unbelievable pressure and uh, with, with, with so much uh, fatigue and stuff. But like you said, he's a warrior. And, and he, was, he was literally, I mean, he was basically our number one. I mean, you know. <coughs> Put the rankings aside. He's the guy that uh, had the most wins and the most confidence on, under his belt coming into this, and he was, uh, in theory, our number one player, and he played like one this weekend. Okay. Uh, about a year ago in the Rogers Cup, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic lost to an anonymous, anonymous Canadian, Canadian doubles team, and since then Milos has had his breakthrough. A big breakthrough until he obviously got injured. Do you think we're now witnessing your breakthrough to the top one, top 100, even higher than that? Yeah, I mean, I like to think so. I think I think my game is there. Obviously, for me, it's just maybe a little bit different because he has a uh, you know one huge shot that he can rely on that he's always had. So so uh, whereas for me, for me, I have I have a lot to my game. I have different you know I can do everything pretty well, and, and uh, I think it takes longer to to develop a game like mine, whereas Milos has a lot of power and a big serve and a big forehand, so he can break through earlier, I think. But, uh, but uh, no, I, I've been getting a lot of confidence. I've been getting uh, good wins, and uh, I think uh, I've proven to myself that I, that I can be in the top 50, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just going to keep working hard and I'm not going to get too, too far ahead of myself and, and just hit the practice courts and then try to, try to make top 50 as my goal. So basically, what's your aim for the rest of the season? Is it the top 50 or is it winning tournaments? Well, I don't know if I have enough tournaments to play uh, to make top 50 at the end of the year because um, I think I only have four on my, on my schedule. But so, uh, but I mean, the goal for the end of next year for sure would be it would be nice to be. I mean, I'm, I'm not too far from top 100, so at least top 100. That's that's my goal, and then and then within two years, I'd like to be in the top 50. I don't know if you were aware of this, but uh, success in Israel in the Davis Cup uh, in the first steps of the career might be a sign to the future. You can ask Novak Djokovic and Andy Murray that played here when they were 16 and 18. You know where they come from. You think you have the uh, same future? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's hard to say. It's just, it's just uh, another tie, you know, different players, different, different everything. It's, uh, I can't, I can't say just because I, I played well in Israel, I did, and I'm going to be top five in the world too. But, uh, but, uh, but I'll definitely keep working hard, and I, and like I said, I, I believe my game is, is a top 50 uh, caliber right now. How do you feel about your back end? It seemed to me that you lost more points on it than, than just about anything else. Uh, no, I, I thought I was doing my backhand fine. Like obviously, I prefer my prefer my forehand, but uh, I mean when I. I mean, I, I didn't think I was in my backhand bad, that bad this week. I thought I was hitting pretty well, but uh, returning really well from the backhand side. And uh, obviously, I prefer my forehand, so when I make my return, I usually take forehand as the rest of the point if I can. Uh, Marty, you have in your arsenal uh, higher ranked players than uh, Peter Polanski that didn't come to this tie. Like, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right, Chvojka or uh, Douglas and. Um, I remember the third one, but no, Dantzers I think is injured. Uh, why, why did you decide to go with Polanski in general and today, in particular? Well, it's uh, it's a combination of factors. <coughs> really, it's difficult to say one thing about the selection, but uh, a lot of these guys were uh, playing in Asia and they were working on their on their uh, careers. And uh, knowing knowing how tough this was going to be, uh, there's some some young guys that are playing good, but it's also important, I think, somewhere to have some experience. And uh, you know, we, we picked the guys that uh, that were very committed to the Davis Cup this year, primarily. I mean, you know, the guys that put ahead Davis Cup ahead of their own personal agenda. I, I think 
very high value on on, uh, on that. And I'm always going to do that. And, uh, and and these guys that are here, they've been doing this all day long. So uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, I'm glad everybody here is able to you know, perform good and, and get us a win. please, from, from your point of view, what was missing from the Israeli players against you time after time in this, during this weekend? I mean, what was the strongest point of view against them? The couples, uh, Weintraub, Dubisela, you seem to control every, every game. The main thing from your point of view. Well, I don't know, I guess, I guess I, we served a little bit better than both of them, but um, I mean, I was returning and serving really well all week. I mean, I mean the match against duty, it was obviously uh, I, had, I had chances to win the second set and the fourth set, but, but you know, in the end, that was just a really bad, it's just a battle, like that was anybody's match, and uh, could have gone either way in the fifth set, so I wouldn't say I was the clear, better player or anything, but, but uh, for sure, I think uh, just my, my returns and my serving lets me get deep into every game and puts a lot of pressure on me. More questions? Another question, Another question from Marvin. What are your, the teams, what are the team's plans for the rest of the evening and your stay in Israel? Are you going to, how, how are you, how are you planning to celebrate? Are you going to do sightseeing? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's usually the case, uh, you know, uh, in Davis Cup, uh, there's tournaments coming up, there's flights the next morning, it's, it's a